Hi, I'm Heimbach. It's good to have you back. I'm sitting in front of my wall of test equipment that I've spent the last one and a half years putting together and turning into something that I cannot use for measuring but for music. Every piece in this ensemble of seemingly random stuff plays a role and together this is my instrument. But what is an instrument if you don't play it live? For me, the thought of taking this outside is impossible because this is A, heavy, B, very complex and C, I like the skills to repair this if something should break. But luckily I got asked to play a streaming show. So instead of performing on my usual set of instruments, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to play this live. That streaming show is today. I mean, the day this video goes up and I'll put a link down here and in the description so you can come by and see how this all turns out. But in this video, I want to show you how I, yeah, assemble that show because it's a big challenge to create long form musical pieces with this. As imposing as it looks from a musical standpoint, this is pretty dumb. It is lacking so many things that are required for musical expression. There is no easy way to change pitches except for manually tuning each of the oscillators or filters to that key. There is no way to create sudden shifts of everything or breaks. It is musical as immovable as it physically is. I'm feeling giddy, if that's the word for anxious and excited at the same time about trying this out with the wall. But now it's time to start patching this. This HP 1881A rate generator is the master clock for everything because it won't accept a clock from the outside but it runs this very nice word generator. So if I want to use this word generator I need to use this as the main master clock. I've had it already distributed to the booger before here, which I made a video on, which is probably the best of all these clock generators. But now I've installed this one up top here. So this has a clock in and it should accept the HP master clock with no problem. But still, I have to figure out the whole signal path for that. So there are three word generators for the rhythm and this Programmierbare Impulse Generator, which I mostly use for tiny clicks and cuts because it's kind of unpredictable how you can program that. It, it does weird stuff because it's, it's all in milliseconds and you can turn on and off all these steps. It's fascinating. Now what do all these trigger generators actually trigger? They trigger filters. Here's a set of model 189 selective amplifiers, which are multi-mode filters. And these are exactly the same one as in the magical ARP 2500. They sound identical because these are the same circuits adapted by the designer for use in the ARP 2500. For wooden clicks, I love using the series of Brühl & Kier bandpass filters down here to that side. They just sound very natural and are to me the classic sound of test equipment percussion. Hidden down here is the bass drum to end all other bass drums, the Rodenschwarz UBM, which is mostly in that duty in my studio. The next thing that I like to ping are lock-in amplifiers and these were made to find out the tiniest signal in the harshest noise. But since they are at heart bandpass filters, you can ping them and they sound glorious. My favorite ones are from Princeton Applied Research. And there's one, two, three, four in this setup. This might seem like overkill, but each of these sounds very different. To get melodic patterns and arpeggios, I use this multiplexer, which is fed by eight oscillators from various manufacturers. Hewlett Packard function generators, Tektronics, Wavetech, and more Wavetech, and the big RC generator that is the basis for Fundamental, the plugin I developed together with Sonic Lab. Up top here are vacuum tube saw and pulse generators, of which only three are working, but they are 
incredibly beautiful and there's a full video on these if you're more interested but these run directly into this mixer right next to that because that is able to handle the 25 volts that these put out they run into this variable filter for crone and height which is the smoothest filter I've ever heard. In the nuclear instrumentation modular, there's a bunch more stuff to process and modulate. There's for example this gate scanner, which works nice with the gated integrator and can even create melodies. And then there are these analog processors, which do math on a signal, on two to be exact. So you can take A and B, uh, subtract them, add them, take the root out of that and add a filtering function. A nice way to turn a clean sign into something more raw. There's a dedicated test equipment mixer that was meant for microphone arrays and that works wonders. It also has an MS-20 like filter. But else I use these little passive mixers by Omnitronic which are basically just a pot in a box. These passive mixers run into the Tascam 4 to 4 4 track. There can also add tape loops which adds a new layer to the whole sound because once you sample the test equipment or the tape loops it gets a very distinct and different texture. <laughs> Because my Tuscum only has one aux, I require guitar pedals to add effects. So on channel 1 I've got the Moga Foga delay. That's a pretty dark but nice delay. Then on mix 2 I've got the AMA by AC Noises, which is a reverb and bit crusher. On the third channel I've got the Marstro Volvola LEM. <laughs> this really adds to the underwater feeling that you get when pinging these row of Brühl and Kier Bandpass filters. On row 4, which comes straight from the multiplexer, I use the warped vinyl. This just adds some, yeah, longer modulation because it acts like a VCA and it also adds a little bit of tone, especially once I drive it harder, which I'll probably do in the live set. I spent all night trying to figure out the signal path and it worked out quite well. Now I use the wave tech up here as the master clock and it turns out that does work. So this HP word generator accepts a peculiar clock. It needs to be a certain way and then it will trigger. So now all of these are on the same yeah, clock. The biggest problem is that the UBM, the bass drum, is doing double triggers. So so while it sounds nice, there's always this digig, 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 gig. I was able to get rid of that by using a pulse generator, but both of the pulse generators I have here 
have problems. Either they don't trigger or the output is broken. So now I need to head over to patch point and grab one that hopefully works from my landfill totems. I brought this HP with me and this PG-508 from Tektronix. I have three of those, two don't work, but I got them cheaply at least. So I know this one makes sound. I hope it will sync. Oh, it triggers. I got a working one. So by changing the wave of the pulse generator, I can now adjust the sound of the bass drum. I am going to put these kicks into the sound pack I will make to this episode and you can find that on patreon.com slash Heinbach where you can support what I do. Those bass drums gave me an idea about how I want the set to be. I really wanted to be more in the style of my record impulse generator. Pretty hard and pure test equipment techno. So it's different from any other live performance I've ever done so far. I assembled this Tektronix TM500 rack with three oscillators and one bond pass filter. And I'm going to combine this with this Fostex X28H4 track. There is a loop playing already in here from a track that I did called Desktop Orchestra. And I'm basically remixing it. A welcome addition to the setup is the iOS version of Fundamental, the plugin I developed together with Sonic Lab. This is a pre-release candidate and I need to actually film a little video of me playing this together with the Sensel Morph for Apple to approve this app to the store. So two birds in one stone, I'll be using this in the live set and I'll make the video to Apple. Hi Apple! It's the morning of the day of the performance and last night I rehearsed with this and tried to see where it can go. I honestly think I've got 20 minutes of music that I know what I'm doing and from then on it will be, it will be free in an experiment. Which is a scary thought because usually I like to really know how to play my instruments before I go out live with them. But yeah, <laughs> you'll see how that turns out if you can join up to the show. What remains for me to do today before the show is clean up the studio so I can move in the video lights and move in the cameras. I have been streaming experimental electronic music shows since about 2016, first for Pow Wow, and there we just used two Logitech C920 cameras. These are fine cameras for a close-up or a fixed setup but as soon as you have to move things around like I have to do here all the time they're really impractical because you can't adjust the focus or anything so for that purpose I needed to use a real camera and preferably something with a clean HDMI output so I don't see all the menu options and luckily the GH5 that I bought to film 
these videos, has that option. I only needed a relatively cheap Elgato cam capture and I could use the GH5 as my main camera. The main problem then became syncing up the audio and the cameras. Because the webcam has a different delay to a camera that runs by an HDMI in. And then of course your audio has a different delay. It was not always as simple as using OBS and then going to YouTube. For the collaborative streams I do, like single mode synthesis, I use StreamYard. So any solution that I came up with had to work across all these platforms. And as far as I know, today the stream is on Zoom and it completely messed up my head trying to figure out a reliable two camera setup that will work in any of these circumstances. What made matters worse for me was using a MacBook that runs on Catalina and OBS and Catalina don't really get along really well. Even running it in terminal mode, which I consider now serious <laughs> hacking levels of trying to get something like a live stream to work, it didn't work. I couldn't get the audio interface recognized. The routing I had to do truly became Byzantine. But luckily Blackmagic loaned me one of their pocket 4K cameras and an Atom switch. They're the easiest way to get everything done. Because this camera has an audio interface integrated. I can run it via line directly from the mixer. So this is my main camera, which I use for my face and the audio. The Atom switch connects by USB, so I can use it as a webcam. So I've got audio and video together, so there's no more adjusting of anything. I can do switching, inserting overlays and fading, all with the Atom Mini, so I don't have to use OBS for that. And the nice thing is the controller software allows me to grade this. But one thing that I'm definitely missing from the Mini is automatic or timed switching. Or maybe even some kind of artificial intelligence approach, detecting if there's movement on, let's go there and have that kind of weighted. Because I don't have hands free, we'll be using all of this and uh, I'll be playing. So I can't concentrate on doing camera perspectives. But luckily, my upstairs neighbor is a director of photography. Julia Moser also made the beautiful video to light splitting that you can check out. Here, he will bring a third camera and operate the Atom. I'm going to rehearse a bit more and then it's time to get the studio ready. This is about as prepared as I'm gonna get because I still need to edit this footage and make some thumbnails and upload the video. I hope we'll see each other on the stream or I think it will be archived later and I'm also very curious how many of you show actually up because I've never done a pay-per-view stream before and I wonder if it's something that can help musicians make a living in these tiring times because it's not like you are doing a show where you're playing the same material every night which is basically the model of music you create a piece and then you play that in many different countries and you get yeah this very unique experience and trying to do something new for every live stream that i do that's that's a probably bad return on investment but it's fun to do and I wish I could sit at the merch table with you and flog some of my lovely t-shirts but at least you can get them via the Teespring link below. That's it for this video. If you have any questions do leave in the comments below or visit the subreddit. Thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye!